Welcome to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman on webtalkradio.net. So I hope as you guys listen every week to the show that you feel uh, absolutely my passion and my desire to try to help you change your perspective so that you could create that successful life in the future and whatever that means to you. Now, by incorporating the little changes that we share on the show, my guests and I share on the show, um, you'll be able to create, those little changes create this huge impact on the back end, whether it's building client relationships, scaling your business, ultimately growing your income, who doesn't want that? Um, but for me, it's really creating that life that you desire. So I hope you feel that, I hope you're learning from my guests and I, and I'm so excited that you're here with me every week. So my motivational quote is by Tom Landry, and he says, a coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear, who has you see what you don't want to see, so you can be who you are always known you could be. So how many of you have hired a coach or perhaps perhaps you may even be a coach and do that for a business? So why is coaching becoming so important and such an important field for us? And it's an absolutely important skill to develop if you choose to help others grow. Now, understanding how to coach and inspire other humans, it actually takes some skill and some practice. Now, as a coach, you have to understand how people's brains are wired, right? Scary place to go at times. Um, how and why they do the things or the habits that they do, and then how to dig into the nooks and crannies and actually help change those habits um, for good. So does this sound interesting to you? I know I am always fascinated about coaching and learning about coaching. So today my guest, of course, is an expert. Her name is Darina Lanza. Now, as a consultant, master business coach and mentor, Darina is known for her ability to bring together teams of people and inspire them to perform at a level they didn't even think was possible. Now, she has consulted with, coached and mentored thousands of people and corporations around the world um, over the last 30 years. She doesn't look she looks like she's 10 so it's all good as a result her clients have increased their sales by more than two billion dollars now using her proprietary science-based processes coupled with inner work Darina guides her clients to develop a systemized approach to attract a steady stream of ideal clients into whatever their programs are so she delivers um, delivers amazing breakthrough results so please please help me welcome my good friend Darina to the show so thanks so much for being on and taking the time um, to help my listeners well, thank you so much for having me. This is great. Yeah, Serena and I met a few weeks ago. Um, we were both doing an online challenge, which was really intense. Um, I felt like my whole world uh, turned upside down, and it was instant uh, yin yang with Serena and I. We have a lot of complementary skills, so I I thought, yeah, she's got to come on the show. We got to talk about uh, coaching, and really, Serena, it's more about getting into the other person's head and helping them understand where they're coming from. So that's kind of where your sweet spot is. So now you have a very interesting take on the state of coaching on that, that whole industry and what it takes to really become that standout player and the trusted advisor in whatever niche people are in. So how do you view the growth journey of what that successful looks, the successful coach, what that looks like um, to go from, you know, point A to success? Well, one of the things in the industry that's going on, uh, it seems as though there is a sea of sameness out there, okay? There are so many people. Everybody looks like everybody else. They're just not differentiated. You know, they're a life coach or a business coach or, you know, whatever they are. And I realized, uh, well, I realized a couple of things. Uh, One thing that I realized was that all of the successful uh, people in this industry, successful coaches, went through a process where they essentially had the uh, proverbial crap beaten out of them, probably on multiple occasions. I know that's true for me. Um, And... uh, managed to rise like the phoenix from the ashes. And so many people are down in uh, in the weeds, still crawling along the ground, never being able to uh, bring themselves out of that. So I noticed that uh, every single solitary, very successful person in this industry went through that and can translate what they went through 
uh, to help other people. So that's number one. Uh, secondly, I noticed that uh, the sea of sameness, sameness, and I'm Italian, so I use my hands. Me too. <laughs> I, I, I hope that's okay. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, people are really busy being generalists, all right? Mm -hmm. And as a generalist, you're not differentiated. You wind up uh, charging low prices. You wind up attracting clients that aren't, um, uh, oh, I can't think of the word in English. Um, Ideal? Ita Italian's my, <laughs> my native language here. Um, oh, Ideal? Uh, your ideal client? Uh, no, they no they they they're they're attracting people who are not vested because they're charging such a small amount of money. Sure. The clients wind up not getting results because they're not paying attention because they didn't invest much and they're just kind of sort of trying and they don't get referrals, uh, they don't get any kind of growth and they're just kind of like blah and they can't figure out what's going on. Well, what needs to happen for somebody to make it in this in this industry is they need to go from a generalist to a specialist. There are seven ways to specialize. I won't get into them right now, but essentially as a specialist, you pick a niche that you are in a position to address better than other people. Then uh, you can become an authority. Then there's the possibility of becoming a celebrity and then a celebrity authority if you so desire. Now what you're going to find is that most people kind of stop at authority because they, you know, an authority pulls in a couple, you know, one, two hundred thousand uh, dollars, I was going to say a month, a year. <laughs> um, and they're happy with that. So that's good. Uh, but then the issue becomes, what do you need to do in order to go from a specialist to an authority to a celebrity to a celebrity authority? That's the big question. So that's my view of the industry. And, um, you know, if you want to jump in, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to go through how you do that. But go ahead. Yeah. And, and it's funny that you say that because I remember I did... Um like an online class about coaching because I'm always trying to hone my coaching skills because number one, I'm with my clients, I'm coaching, right? But I'm right. also teaching leaders and supervisors how to coach and hold their people accountable. So you, you, I, I know I have blind spots. I, I know I don't know everything. So I'm mm -hmm. always looking and listening and I love hearing different ideas because you pick something up here, something up there and you, you get better at your, your skill. So I remember, I did, and I won't mention a name, but I did, I did his little master class class and at the end they said you get a, a 30 minute free coaching call to continue to grow your business and and what have you and I thought this is fascinating again not that I felt I needed help but you I'm one that says you never know so I schedule it and this woman gets on with me she was lovely um, she had just started coaching she went through the person's coaching program got a certification and now she was going to help me now at that time I probably was in business about 15 years and I was in sales 25 so mm -hmm. I, I know my craft right and so I said to her well, what's your background she goes, well this isn't about me I said well if I decide to work with you, I need to know the depth of your knowledge and how you can enhance and help me. So talk to me about, well, came to be, and this is nothing wrong with this, but she was basically a stay-at-home mom, traveled with her husband because he was an executive somewhere. The kids were grown, and now she wanted to do something. So went through this coaching program, became a coach. She was coaching about three months, and she was going to help me grow my business. And I sat there and I said, listen, you know, and it was, it, let me tell you, it was about $15,000 a year. This was not a cheap program, but I was going to get her as my coach. So immediately, Doreen, I, I thought to myself, are you freaking kidding me? Sweetheart, I could be coaching you, but not, and I'm not taking anything away from this woman. She could be extremely successful today. But at that point in her career, she wouldn't have been able to help me. She should have been helping newbie people that should have been her marketplace so shame on the person who certified her to say hey this is where you start he should have an arc within his training of how to go from the the steps like you said to become that celebrity and influencer but she certainly was not able or capable at that point to coach me because i i knew I knew so much more than her, right, at that point about business. She had never been in business before. So the, when you said before, everybody and everybody has their shingle out, 
be careful because that doesn't make them, they have a certification, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. Be careful, right? Well, that is very scary, yeah. which uh, brings me to a point um, that's a little bit off topic, but I'm going to give you my opinion whether you want it or not. I would love that. Uh, <laughs> um, it is my opinion that uh, people who are reasonably successful in the coaching arena don't understand how to grow people and at which point to bring which person in to assist. So they figure, well, you know, I'm making whatever it is and I'm charging $15,000 for a thing and I need some help because I'm a big important something or other and it's all about them. And they bring in this, this, this poor slob who's doing their best. It's not the fault of the Agreed. woman that, Agreed. You know, that spoke with you. It's the fault of the guy that should Agreed. know better. Yep. And uh, this sort of thing is what um, casts the coaching industry in a bad light. You know, you got the guru and then you get the beginner after you paid 20 grand or something. It's like, what, 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 what's going on here? Absolutely. You know? um, so this is a good question because I agree with you. And, and listen, she was lovely. And, and the, and the yeah. funny thing is she had the disposition. Um, she was very patient and I thought she will be successful, but you can't charge someone, you know, $1,500 a month with zero experience. That was, that was offensive to me because of my pricing structure after at that point, 25 years and, you know, 10 or 15 years in business. Like, how dare you think that you could just step in? You're not an authority. So wh why would you charge? So this becomes my next question. Cause I know I have a lot of people that I come in contact with and they really do have nice natural coaching ability intuitive empathetic great listening all of those core things so my listeners who are thinking oh so I could never become a coach then because I, you know I've never been a coach what would you say for someone who really does want to break into that coaching industry how to start without getting certified and then charging you know two thousand dollars a month what would you recommend um well learning how to coach is a good thing to do I'll give you that. Uh, you need to develop experience if you're going to coach. Now, I am not the person that can work with the housewife and get the housewife into coaching and help the, help the housewife figure out what her specialty might be and so on and so forth. So I probably shouldn't be speaking to that what I should be speaking to, and we didn't talk at all about, about my background, uh, but I, I wind up working with people who have uh, done something. And of course, you know, if you're a housewife and you raised five kids, you've learned something about something, right? God bless you. You said <laughs> okay. it. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, so I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I don't, I probably didn't say the previous thing uh, correctly. Um, but the, the, the people that, uh, that can't, the people that are going to be successful have to have had some experience that they uh, developed, lifted up from, which brings me back to my earlier comment. Uh, they may have been a management consultant or a yep. mergers or an acquisitions per person or a rocket scientist or a professor or a network marketing, um, you know, top leader with 50,000 downline, you know, named one of the top trainers in, in the industry. Uh, I just gave you, and most of a PhD in math. I just gave you my background, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about medical physics. <laughs> that was good. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant um, minds. But, yeah. But, but no, Oh, but 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 you've got something that you can deliver tangible and yeah, exactly exactly so if you were born yesterday and you've never done anything and you've never raised kids and you've never really done anything you, you got to kind of you know figure out which end is up I'm not your guy there are other people that uh, you know can probably help in that arena to develop the people but once somebody has the specialist thing the uh, real key to me, and this is uh, this is one of the main things that 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 I coach on my programs. I teach and I coach. I was a professor for 20 years at, at Northeastern University, so, and I've always taught. I was a ski instructor. I, you know, I've it's always in your blood. Taught. It's in your blood. Um, yeah, absolutely. And 
one of the key things to go once you figure out your specialist area, uh, the key that you need to have is to become an attractor of people. All right. And I discovered that uh, in my first network marketing company, uh, I got to Blue Diamond Executive back in the 90s and people were coming up to me and they wanted to know, how did you get there? And they wanted to know, well, first I did this, then I did that, then I did that. That's not the way it works. Nope. You need to become the person you need to be in order to attract those people. Well, I managed to figure out uh, what it takes to become an attractor of people, and I figured out how to teach it to other people, which is wonderful. And and the whole basis is, uh, well, actually, there are a few bases. Uh, the first one is know yourself. I take a, I take people through a process where we look at their archetypes, and we can talk about more about that in a second. Yes, yes, uh, I love and, that topic. And, yeah, and, and the ar your archetype is how you fit in the world, what stories you tell yourself, you know, what your existence is, is defined by. And archetypes can change as you get older and more mature. Uh, then the second uh, component I take people through is, uh, is looking at their mind type. Their mind type is essentially their operating system, which was installed when they were little kids based on their experience. So for instance, I, my mind type is a master. A master goes really deep. Oh boy, I can tell you more than you want to know about any subject I'm interested in. <laughs> You're the researcher. Many, yeah, many people yeah. run screaming in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. That's a separate issue. Um, and uh, why did that happen? Probably because when I was a little kid, I was told, shut up, you have nothing to contribute. Uh, we don't want to hear from you, so that's how I wound up reacting. Other people wind up reacting by becoming caregivers, you know, and, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, so once you know your archetype, how you show up in the world, and your mind type, which is what your operating system is, and then of course we do the loves and talents and the and the and the values assessment. Uh, finding your why is tied into the whole uh, mind type thing. Then all of a sudden you've got a picture of who you are and how you show up in the world. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. Uh, the secret is that if you are a person who is their brand, you're a coach, a mentor, a, an accountant, a lawyer, you know, any individual, your ideal client is somebody very much like you, who at least has the same reason for being as you same why you're going to naturally attract and one of the beauties about this you know people take you through a process where you have to oh you got to put together the client avatar it's a 47 year old woman who's divorced and has you know a kid in college and blah 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 no you don't need any of that if you can go through and figure out who you are at your core and then i take them through a process where they actually uh, you know, sort out their persona, how they look, how they sound, what words they use, so on and so forth. What's their backstory? Sure. You know, my story is that of the ugly duckling. That's my whole thing. Not because you're ugly, but because you were told even though you were a male swan as a baby, think everybody thought you were a duckling. Well, you can't lay an egg. What good are you? You can't purr. What good are you? Go back and read the story. And that's just a, you know, classic path of so many people. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but anyway, once you have that, you can brand yourself or there's a process that I take people through so they can show up in the world in such a way as to have their ideal client say, oh, wow, I, I, I've got, I've got to talk to this person. I, I need to work with this person. So that's the first component. Yeah, it's funny, as you were speaking, it, my mom used to say, um, she still says it, and she's still alive at 91, God bless her, but water seeks its own level. And it's really true. You find, 
your people, right? So, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll just share a quick story. So a couple of years ago, um, one of my, my bigger clients that I've been with them for years and years and years, the um, head of that division that I work closely with, he retired and a woman came in. So, and she and I were connected on LinkedIn, but we had never met face to face. So she comes in and now over the past year, year and a half, as we get to know each other, we have so much in common that, and, and I liked her instantly, which was really kind of funny too. And I thought, oh, I mean, if I met her outside, I'd be friends with this woman, right? This is what goes through your mind. Meanwhile, we're in a, in a professional relationship. Well, over the time, we've become friendly. You know, we go out to dinner and, and things like that. But then last year, my birthday's in November, and we were talking one day. She goes, oh, she, it was her birthday, and it was like two days before mine. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Of course you're a Sagittarius, right? So it, 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 the relationship becomes when we have a conversation, what should we do next? Should we pivot shift? What do you want? What do you need? How can I support? Um, it's like, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. It, it's like we're always on the same page, and we're always talking the same language, which feels good for me, right, as the consultant. And I hope that it feels good for her that like I'm always in sync with her effortlessly. So when you have a client that you feel like you're banging your head against, and by the way, Darina, right? I've had clients like that at the end of that contractor experience, either they don't hire me back because we finished the contract or I choose not to go back because it's just not a fit for me. And it goes back to, you use the word values briefly. But mm -hmm. if your clients and, and what you can help them with, if your values aren't in alignment, it's not going to work. And, and I'll give you another example. If my client's values was it's all about making money. Yeah, man, we all want to make money. Nothing wrong with that. But if that's your number one value, I won't be the right person for you. I'm about let's build the skill. Let's get the meat. Let's get, let's get the train at highest speed possible. And then the money becomes a why were we worried versus how much did we make how much did we make i would not be a good vendor for someone like that yes it's about the money yes we get the results and we measure it but for me it has to start with the employee or it has to start with your individual skill so the values have to be aligned i agree with you 100 percent. it shouldn't be that uphill battle with any client that you're working with it really should be that ease of of um uh, you know, that, that, that water seeks its own level, right? That, that camaraderie of understanding. We, there's a lot of neuroscience that also goes into that. There's, there, and we're, we're finding that neuroscience is really a science now. So what is the neuroscience um, behind communicating that, that message from a coaching perspective so you, you attract the right people to you? Well, um, <clears throat> a couple of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as far as attracting the right people, <clears throat> you'll notice that the generalist does not attract the right people. They grab it, whoever they can grab, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, once you position yourself properly and you're actually attracting those people that can't wait to work with you, they're going to pay more money. They're going to get better results. They're going to love you. You're going to love sure. them. They're going to become long-term clients and they're going to give you referrals. So this is all about positioning yourself. So your right people will, you will be a magnet to your right people and as a magnet does, you will repel the wrong people. You want to be polarizing, definitely. Now, as far as the neuroscience goes, and there's another piece I also wanted to add, but let's talk about the neuroscience. Um, there has been an awful lot of work in many different arenas on how people make decisions and what you need to do in order to get to the right part of the brain so that you can actually get people to make the decision that they should make. That being working with you because you're inherently uh, uh, intended to work together. And the brain has, has um, three parts. You've got the reptilian brain. I call it the croc brain for the crocodile. You've got the limbic system and you've got the neocortex. One of the issues when people try to communicate is they try to con uh, communicate neocortex to neocortex. Oh, well, here's the logic of why you should work with me. Or oh, here's a spreadsheet which will show you how to make money. In the meantime, um, 
<laughs> what, any message has to go by, get by the croc brain before it can go anywhere else. And uh, what does the croc brain uh, think? Well, think, I use that uh, in quotes. Uh, the, a message shows up, the croc brain is sitting there going, hmm, should I eat it? Should I mate with it? Or should I run away? Okay, those are the decisions the croc brain is worried about. They're not worried about, uh, you know, your Excel spreadsheet or something. So you've got to get past that croc brain, and there are uh, there are uh, a number of different things that you need to do in order to get past the croc brain. You've got to be you want to be visual, you want to be fast, you want to look like uh, something they've never seen before because if the croc brain thinks that you're like somebody else. When people ask you, what do you do? And you go, oh, I'm a coach. The croc brain goes, I know what a coach is and I don't want one Dismissed. and boom, you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, so once, and you know, there are a couple of other uh, things that I teach. Uh, once uh, your message gets past the croc brain, then the limbic system begins to pay attention. And through the mind type, knowing the mind type, you now can create limbic messages based on what you believe. So, you know, I believe you were made to soar about the crowd. And the people that are meant to work with me are going to go, yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. And so, you know, we work to develop those limbic messages and pepper them through web copy, sales copy, uh, when you speak, because it's the limbic, me uh, limbic message, um, the, the limbic system that actually makes the emotional decision, and I'm sure you've heard this before, the limbic makes the emotional decision once you get past that crock brain, and then the neocortex is busy justifying it. Okay. Now, one very important piece that, that is also very important to know about yourself, important and important, I'm being redundant, that's okay, um, is to know what your wealth flow style is. Okay, you figured out who you are, and let's say um, you take, and I have multiple scientifically validated assessments that I take people through. I know you use many. You use many. I, yeah, yeah, I use which many. Which is wonderful. And, and I also use a lot of inner work. I believe in the merger of Agreed. the two because I believe that the inner self actually knows. Yep. But all the assessments kind of validate. Confer. They're yep. like, Oh my God, I knew that. How did you know that about me? Because you went through the assessment. I can give you chapter and verse. I did a thing uh, yesterday with nine people and they were just floored <laughs> with how well I you know, could read them and tell them how they were and so on and so forth. But anyway, if you know your, your wealth flow style, <clears throat> so many people are busy trying to speak from the stage or trying to sell from the stage or something. And they go and they do their, their, their assessment and it comes out that they're really somebody that ought to be in a back room putting together systems. Well, guess what? If you know what that style is, you know how to communicate with your clients in a way that you can get through. Absolutely. You know, so all those pieces put together put you in a position where you can go from specialist to authority and then if you want celebrity and... Uh, yeah. and onward and you know when the first time you and i spoke it it's so fascinating to get into what i call the nooks and crannies of the brain and when you say something because there's all these services right and sciences that are out there and proven and and really usable to make someone understand who they are where they come from how they're wired what they think why they think what they think why people perceive them the way they're perceived out in the world right that message they're sending out and as soon as you explain it, they know it intuitively, but because they didn't have something tangible to go back and say, oh, that's why I do that, or that's why my mom does that, or my husband or wife does that. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, there's this level of understanding because you have this tool that is clear and concise and proven that it grounds you and thinks, why was I doing that? I hate doing that. I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This feels much more comfortable for me. So before when you were saying, should you be on stage or behind the scenes? I need to be on stage, baby. Okay, I should have my own TV show <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. You put me to create 
the sound system or oh. um, the mechanics behind it or make sure the slides work. All that technology, pins in my eyes. Could I do it if I had to? I'm smart. Yeah, I can. Do I want to do it? Hell no. That's like torture to me. So you have to know what your superpowers are. And all of I, I, and that's why, Darina, when we first met, I loved that you use the archetype. You use the um, you use the love, the love uh, information loves and talents. Yep, loves and talents. Yep. So and all of these pieces of the puzzle, just the wealth flow, all of those things create the path of least resistance and of what you should be doing or should not be doing. And that's why yesterday, you, when we, before we started, you were talking about the nine. And when I do it with my communication style assessment, people go, are you a witch? We go, yeah. Serena and I are like, yes, yes we are. We, we see through you, right? We don't. It's the science based in the information that we've been doing this for so long, 30 years, 38 years that we you, you get good because it's easy to see because we've been using it and here's the other thing and then we're, we're out of time but i want to say one more thing all the things that darina is sharing with you and all these tools once you understand it and and you work at it you can apply it to all of your communications in life so whether you're a coach or whatever other uh position leadership position you might have in an organization these tools help you become better at and whatever that is for you that you're doing as a career. It makes it a really um, a seamless, easy flow and harmony in life. Would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. And it not only helps you in business, it helps you in life also. Totally. Uh, you know, you know, somebody's an innovator, mind type innovators. What do they do? They fix things even if they're not broken and yep. they drive other people crazy. But if you know you're dealing with an innovator yep. or a rebel, uh, it, you expect that sort of thing. So, so the communication improves, yeah. um, you know, even on a personal basis. Yeah. And, and yeah. I love that's, I think why when you and I met, we were talking the same language clearly, because we've been using it in our own career. We've become um, expertise with it because we've done it so much. It, it, it just, it almost becomes, um, the intellectual property now. Cause like, I don't, when I meet someone, I don't think, Oh, you're a whatever <laughs> I, you know, and then you can shift. It, it's like an automatic thing, but because you and I have been doing this so long. So anybody that's listening, these tools are, are available. Obviously, uh, Darina has a wealth of resources that she uses that I love because before you can start your developing or scaling or growing your business, you have to do some inner work. And, and I, and the people that find you, Darina, I believe are thinking, yeah, I need to start with my inner self before I can work on that external, right? That business, whatever it is um, to make money, scale business, et cetera. So now you have, um, and we're going to share a link on the web talk radio enlightenment of change website, but you have a free masterclass that you run. Can you share that information with everyone? If you would. Um, yes. Uh, it is the brand your brilliance masterclass. And it's a program that I run every eight weeks or so. And it will get you the fundamentals of uh, who you are and, uh, a, you know, who, who, who you should be serving. Talk a little bit about how you show up, uh, the look and feel of your website and your you know, nice. messaging and that kind of thing. And uh, then I have a, a bigger program, which gets into more depth, obviously and also money mindset and all kind you know how to structure your high ticket uh, uh, offerings and that kind of thing uh, that uh, people can can opt in to i have both my website which is dorinalanza.com and i have a an, i have the archetype assessment up there so if you want to take it and i don't give you all the details but i give you you know the fundamentals of the differences between each archetype and then i also have a, a facebook group that i run uh, the uh, the brand your brilliance masterclass through and also lots of other cool stuff and it is uh, circle of elite 
entrepreneurs. And I guess we can post the links when uh, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll post it. And and um, the website is critical, guys. You it, you have to take the archetype. It's so important for you to understand because it's another piece. I feel like life is about a puzzle or a tapestry, right? And we have mm. these threads of information or these puzzle pieces that we get to put in place. And what Darina, the archetype, is another tool for you to put kind of in your tool belt to help you understand and just show up better um, to live with more harmony and I think that we all need that right I think um, harmonious relationships both on the personal and professional side are really critical so I will post all of that Darina thank you so much and the eight weeks it runs so I'll put the link guys for that free master class so that you can get a vibe do some of these um, assessments and then see if um, you know you're ready for Darina to work with her or um, you know how you can work with her uh, personally so again the the more information you get the clearer the path becomes the direction um, becomes clear and where you need to 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 head so please check that out and again it's darinalanza.com also another tool for you to put in your tool belt um, I have go to whitmanassos.com slash CSA and I have my free communication style assessment. It builds and complements everything we just talked about today and with Darina's archetyped and other tools that she uses. And Darina took the CSA. Um, we are simpatico. We're both stimulating motivators. Again, no surprise. Um, the cool thing about my communication style assessment, that CSA, is that it the names that you, you'll get an immediate report and it's names like are you a heartfelt advocate everybody listening just for me saying that you know if you are or you're not stimulating motivator that's what Doreen and I high energy we want everybody to thrive and succeed right um, innovative organizer you use the word innovative they're people who can dig in and create so all of the titles feel good but you think oh I want more that's what Doreen and I are talking about that thirst for who am I? How can I get better? And how can I show up better to create that harmony? And when you do that, all good things come to you. And that's what I start my show with. Shifting your perspective, learning, expanding, and then life just seems to unfold in front of you. Do you agree, Darina, with that? Yeah, absolutely. And I wanted to add one more thing sure. that uh, there are a lot of um, people, programs that offer you know, one aspect of some kind of uh, assessment. Agree. Okay. What I tried to do, and I'm going to be adding uh, Connie's communication style assessment to my program, or the next time I run it, that's going to be part of it. Um, I think that uh, this is really the only 360 degree. I agree. Um, uh, figuring out who you are thing, for lack of a better word. Yep. It's not like, oh, we're going to do this and this one thing. And then you think, what about this other thing? And it's not addressed. Uh, one of the important things is addressing cool. uh, everything. Agree. And and that's when, when we first met and you did the archetypes and the love and the wealth. And I'm like, yes, yes. And I have the CSA. I think it's another piece of the puzzle. So exactly. for me, for me with sales, I don't want to get into that entire because it's for me, it's about you developing skills. All of that other stuff, I'm hoping that you've already done some self-work. So that's why Doreen and I kind of tag team with clients because it's a good, we're, we're a good yin-yang, definitely, with what we offer and how we offer it. So yeah, we were uh, excited when we realized that we could collaborate and create something even better than just what we're working on. That's what, that's what I think partnership and leadership and growth is all about. I don't know everything, right? And Darina added some things to my toolbox that I thought, yeah, man, I need to start including that with my peeps and vice versa. So um, you have to be open to it, man. You, you got to open your perspective and realize you can't know everything. And there's all these wonderful resources to help us navigate. So Darina, thank you for sharing. And I really hope everybody get gets a, a feeling of that 360 picture so that they could show up better. And, and um, I, I think that's just really an important message. So thank you so much for being on. Truly, truly a fun show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This yeah, was great. Great. And you know, and I will, we'll see each other. Uh, Absolutely. You know, yeah, again, you're going to be sick of me, but that's okay. <laughs> 
And you guys, I hope you will join me weekly as we question, build, and discover together that no matter what change you're going through, there are tools, resources, and people out there. We've got your back. And all you have to do is reach out and say, help, or can I learn that? And continue to grow um, whatever journey you're on. Um, just keep adding those puzzle pieces to your puzzle or that thread of your tapestry. And let's make it a beautiful, beautiful image and a beautiful tapestry so life becomes just amazing. And that's, that's what we're all here to do, right? Achieve, grow. Um, and have just beautiful lives. So thank you so much. You've been listening. Um, you've been listening to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host Connie Whitman, um, WebTalkRadio.net. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Darina, for being on and being such a great guest. I wish you all an inspired week and try to choose something this week that will just help you grow. Go on Darina's website, DarinaLanza.com, and maybe the, the answer is waiting for you. Thanks, everybody.